When the tennis legend retired from competition more than 20 years ago, it was assumed that she would keep a low post-career profile. But even that might be understating her activity in the 21st century. When Graf retired, she told confidants that she was through being a public figure. No more interviews. No more awkward sponsor grip and grins. No more contractual obligated appearances. She's not the first retiring athlete to make this pronouncement. She's among the few to stick so faithfully to her promise. When a German tournament offered her a seven-figure appearance fee, essentially to pose for photos and cut a ribbon, she declined. When producers inquire about documentaries, they're politely turned away. At Wimbledon in 2013, the WTA held a 40th anniversary gala and invited all of the tour's former number one players. From Billie Jean King to Navratilova to Everett to Austin to Jennifer Capriati, they came to this festival of sisterhood. Some were in their 80s and required walkers. Yvonne Goulagon flew from Australia. She hit it off with Anna Ivanovich, a recent number one, almost 40 years her junior. Yet the woman who held the ranking longest was not in attendance. Last fall, when Novak Djokovic was on the threshold, ultimately unsuccessful, of becoming the first player since 1988. To win the Grand Slam, the US Open organizers hoped the last player to pull off the feat would be on hand. Steffi Graf declined the invitation. Graf launched Children for Tomorrow in 1998 with a view to helping children and adolescents who've been impacted by war and organized violence. It is located in Hamburg and she's deeply involved in its operations. She also supports her husband's various ventures. The celebrity aspect of a tennis star's career never appealed to Graf and she has remained out of the limelight for the most part. While she continues to do the things she loves, she does it while maintaining a low profile.